Hi everyone, my name is Rebecca and welcome to my YouTube channel, Rebecca's Wild Side. If you're new here, hi, <laughs> this is where I talk about all my knitting projects and if you have been with me for the last few months, welcome back. I am in a permanent space now, so I have finally finished my, my craft room and this is it. I, I did film another video which hasn't gone out yet, uh, which is a project vlog and I do give a mini tour of the room, so I will save that for another time. But yeah, I'm here, this is where I'm gonna be now. At this time of year, I'm gonna be sat at my desk because I've got a skylight and it's very dark um, over in the corner. I do have a lamp over there, but it's still, it's not quite bright enough. And in the summer, we'll see what the light does. I have no idea yet, I haven't been in this room um, <laughs> at other parts of the year, so yeah. It's super nice to have my own space, very cozy, I come up here, most mornings, pop the heating on, drink my coffee. <laughs> so in today's podcast, I'm going to be discussing my finished objects, some whips, a couple of acquisitions, and then I'm going to add a section at the end, which I know some other podcasters do, and I'm a huge fan of. Um, I'm just gonna talk about what I've been reading, what I've been watching. It won't be any more than 10 minutes. It, it won't even be that because um, although I enjoy reading, I don't get much done but I think it's something I want to share with you, so that's going to be new in today's video. It has been over three weeks since my last podcast, and I'm going to be 100% honest with you. Yes, I've been busy, um, but I felt like I haven't been worthy of making another video. Not me necessarily, but I have not finished really any of the whips that I showed you in the last episode. I did finish the one stockinette sock that I was working on, just one, um, and I won't be knitting a second sock for that. Uh, I didn't enjoy it, yeah. And I have been working on the whips, so they have, you know, grown, and I have got a few more whips. I wanna say a couple, I think I've got three more whips. Um, but I do have two finished objects, two not including the sock. I will show you the sock. <laughs> I'm gonna start with my favorite finished object. So this is a new cast on and a finished object. This is my weekend hat. Let's put it on for you. So I have made the Oslo hat a few times and love the pattern. I haven't quite got gauge. I've done a an, a mohair edition with, I think I held fingering weight double held with mohair and I think I was knitting really loose because it came out quite big and that's for Ed. I will, I actually have a clip of that because he, he did wear it this week. Um, so I'll insert that and show you what it looks like, which I loved. Um, and then I bought the weekend hat and I made the baby weekend hat that you saw in uh, the last episode. But so that's completely off gauge. That was knit uh, in DK held double, so I don't know what that is. But this is Drops Baby Merino, held with Drops Kid Silk. And this is an acquisition that you saw a few weeks ago. Um, I can't remember the colors and I don't have the labels, but I do have them written down, so they will be in the description, but I will also pop them on the screen. And it's this beautiful raspberry colour. I have struggled with hats in the past to get the right stitch count and I never knit the brim long enough. But this one I'm so happy with, finally. I love the decreases I did. I knit this on, I think it's, it's definitely knit on 3.5 millimetre needles, like this part. I can't remember if I knit this bit on 4 millimetre needles or 3.75 because this was one of those late night cast-ons and I knit it in about 48 hours. But yeah, I finally have myself a hat that I love. The, I didn't tell you who the pattern was by, it is a petite knit um, weekend hat. I'm sure you've seen plenty before. I will knit an Oslo hat next, 
just to compare, and, and, and I'll not say that I get it correct for, for me, um, because I think, well, I, I would definitely prefer knitting the Oslo hat because it is straight stockinette, whereas this is a knit one pearl one rib. Yeah, we'll see, but first finished object, very cool, not itchy. Um, I've spoken about it in the past few videos and I will touch on it again in this video. I've got a lot of drops um, yarn going at the moment, uh, mainly because they had a huge sale when I did a big, a big haul and I have been buying from them, well, I buy from an online retailer called Wool Warehouse, usually if they have the colours, but it's stocked in loads of places. And it is just so affordable. I do, I did see something recently. Um, I've heard two different ethical things about drops, which is never a good sign. Um, I did, so the first thing I was, I thought was the sourcing of the yarn um, is quite hard to trace. And I think it's important to talk about these things because you do also have to consider how can this yarn be so cheap. I won't use the word affordable, but let's say cheap because it is. Um, when it's on sale, their standard Lima, Nepal and Flora is pound sixty for 50 grams, which is just mental. Um, so that's the first thing. I think it's quite hard to trace uh, where their yarn comes from. Um, and I'm hoping a bigger deal would have been made about it if it was really bad. And I have tried myself to look into it. And then recently I heard that drops have stolen patterns or a lot of elements from paid patterns by independent designers. And then, so drops patterns are free, give them away for free. Um, that is very worrying. The one thing I will say, which I'm very happy to say about drops patterns, I've downloaded a couple. I will never do it again. I've attempted a couple but given up very quickly. They are, I've heard people say drops patterns are toxic. In my opinion, they completely are. I find them very hard to understand, maybe because I'm a newer knitter, but, and I've heard sizing is all over the place. I'm unaware of their size inclusivity. Um, I haven't looked into it. That is something I will do in the future if I come across their patterns, but I would definitely not recommend their patterns to anybody. Yes, they are that yes, they are free. There are better free patterns out there. So there are the two things about drops, but what I will say is I am a process knitter, I have learnt now. I do enjoy the product. Do I wear the product enough? No. Do I wear my products enough? Probably not. I enjoy knitting with drops. It's very affordable. Um, they have a huge range of different types of yarn, um, which is really nice. And the colors are great. So there will be a, a warning, a lot of drops in this video, um, but lots of different types of drops yarn. So hopefully that'll keep things interesting. I didn't talk about what I'm wearing today. So you have not seen this before. This is, this is a moderation of a petite knit pattern. Um, it is the balloon sweater without the balloon sleeves. Mine are very short, as you can see. Um, so yes, the construction around the shoulder, it's a drop sleeve. This is a, yeah, petite knit balloon sweater. Knit up in. Sunday and knitting for olive soft silk mohair. Colours. <laughs> and the colours will also be in the description. Um, I knit this on four millimetre needles, which is what the pattern calls for. And I've mentioned in the past, a four millimetre needle makes the fabric very loose. Um, it's not a small enough needle to get the desire that I usually want. So it is very a loose knit uh, garment. It is a drop sleeve. I have issues with this garment. This is not my favorite garment. I don't wear it very often. Um, and I, I've worn it out a couple of times, but it's not something I don't know I do, which is funny because ironically, I actually really like how it looks. Um, usually I don't love drop sleeve because they like bellow out here for me. Um, so I like to just tuck them in. This 
it's long enough. This is a like a normal length jumper, but when I tuck it in, because I think either it's too deep, it like pulls all the way up. Like I don't have a lot of room here. I don't know. It's it's a love-hate relationship with this because I do enjoy how it looks. I don't like the practicality of it. The sleeves are not long enough anyway, but they also pull up. Um, yeah, and it's very wide across the shoulders, but I love the colour. Absolutely love the colour. I knew I wanted a sweater in this colour. And yeah, that is what I'm wearing. The one thing I was going to say about this before I went off on my drops tangent is... Um, I find it, I do find, I find it fine against skin, I don't find it too itchy. Um, some people do have an issue with uh, drops next to skin, especially their mohair. I do not. I think the baby merino is super soft. Any merino, like, is super soft to me. So, first finished object. I will quickly show you my single sock. It looks horrendous off my foot. <laughs> It looks really short. I have small feet. I say small feet. I have a size five, a UK five foot. Um, the reason I knit this sock up is because I love the yarn. I don't enjoy knitting <laughs> vanilla socks, stockinette socks. Um, the only pair of socks I have ever knit, so like two finished socks, I gave to my mum and they were the Petal Drop Socks by Florence. Handmade by Florence. So... I think I'm definitely like a lace sock knitter. I will show you a fun acquisition at the end, which I will justify even though I say I'm not a sock knitter. Anyway, it looks so bad on camera. It looks f absolutely normal and fine on my foot. It's really short, it's a shorty because I hate knitting socks and it's boring. Look how wide it looks. <laughs> I wonder if I should, I don't want to put it on my foot because I don't want to show you my foot, but it looks normal on my foot because it totally stretches out. Um, now the reason it is so wide here is because when I knit the ribbing, which is super stretchy, I couldn't, I mentioned it in the last video, I couldn't get it over my, my arch. <laughs> so it was really weird, I don't know. I haven't figured out how to knit socks. I find it, or, or at least a vanilla sock, I haven't got my, my fit correct and like I look at people who I watch the podcast of those twins who knit and yeah Rachel and Jessica and they are like such per perfection knitters in my opinion um everything they knit looks store made or like incredibly well handmade which is obviously what they are and their colours. They've got this kind of beautiful beige thing going on um, and they love their natural colours and it's just beautiful and they do beautiful socks with little like details and things. If I become, <laughs> if I become a sock knitter like that, it'll be great but I don't think it's going to happen um, anytime soon at least. Um, yeah, I would love to knit beautiful socks like that. They look beautiful either on the block or even just off the block, off the blocker. They just hold them and they look like a sock. <laughs> Mine never do. So um, this is colour play number four, the yarn. It's a one-off yarn from Molten Yarns. Um, and it's this just beautiful self-striping hand-dyed yarn. Your standard sock yarn, 75, 25. Goodbye. Oh, I'm gonna show you quickly. I'm gonna put an insert of what I did use another sock. I did another vanilla sock in a, in a yarn that I only did one. <laughs> and I'm gonna show you what I've used it for. So this is one of the boards in my um, craft room. And as you can see, I had like a sock and I had these loose needles that I don't really use. I only use circular needles now, but I had them just hanging and I was like, okay, although it's sticking out at the bottom. <laughs> um, I thought that was so cute. So that is. That is one of my socks. So yeah, totally mad. Single sock, bit of a waste, but anybody have any ideas for single socks? Does anybody else knit single socks and have anything to do with them? Anyway. Now my third finished object is self-drafted. Um, I have never knit a balaclava before and 
I don't know if this is just like a stereotype, I don't know, but I, you don't see them in the UK, or at least I don't, maybe, maybe you do where you are, um, but even in London, like, you don't see hoods or balaclavas, like, wool ones very often. I think they're a lot more common in Scandinavian countries. Um, when I saw, so I have a huge family, I am half Danish, um, and the huge side of my Danish family. Um, I met a lot of them for the first time, but I, I met one of my cousins um, abroad and she was learning how to knit. And I said, oh, I love to knit. Um, what are you knitting? And she said, oh, I'm, I, she, she didn't know the word in English, but she said, oh, I'm knitting a balaclava. And I went, and I, and this is, I'd been knitting for about four months at this point. And I kind of went away and I went, oh God, that's weird. <laughs> Without being judgmental, like I didn't say it, I just thought maybe myself, just because I wasn't aware that they were like a fashion accessory. Um, when you, before I was a knitter, if you said to me balaclava, I think bank robber. Um, <laughs> but obviously now that I am in the echo chamber of fiber arts and the knitting community, I see them all the time and I have absolutely fallen in love with them. I had a look at a few patterns and I wasn't sure um, if I wanted to get one just yet. And I was watching uh, the Norwegian knitter on YouTube. Sorry, I don't know uh, the lovely lady's name. And she was like, yeah, I'm just gonna like, I'm just gonna knit one up. It's basically like a strip, and I could see this from the photos. It's a strip down the middle, knit down the sides, put some ribbing down here. So I was like, yeah, I can do that. Yeah, why not? And I had in stash some Drops Baby Merino in the color 24. I'll put the color name on the screen. And brushed alpaca silk in color 17. And I decided to self draft a kind of balaclava. <laughs> now there are a lot of amendments needed for this. I'm gonna show you what it looks like on without looking. I, I like to call it my bug hood because I look like a bug. So as you can see straight away, I picked up two little stitches um, around the front and I've got this weird double folded edge that I decided to do and it looks weird. If I pull it up, it's a bit better. Excuse my non weaved in edge. See, I think it's super practical. <laughs> I'm gonna take it off now. So as I said, this is knit on four millimeter needles because the brushed alpaca silk is super fluffy and it made a lovely material. Um, but yeah, it's, it's very practical. Like I'm so hot now just trying it on. So I'll probably wear it in the garden and things or if I go for a walk and I know I'm not gonna see many people. But, and it was enjoyable to knit. That's all I have to say really. But I am working on a whip at the moment which is another balaclava. I have bought a pattern this time, so I just wanted to see if I enjoyed it, and I really did. Um, so I'm really glad, and these were scraps. Although I, I did have to order, I panic ordered more, but it's so cheap, it doesn't matter anyway, you can go back into the stash. Um, so yeah, it's just kind of scraps. That's my self-drafted bug hood, because I look like a little bug. And it's super fluffy and Absolutely, that, knitting that made me fall in love with the brushed alpaca silk. So that is all my finished objects this week. As I said at the beginning of the video, um, I did struggle a little bit with the idea that I didn't have... It's not that I didn't have many things to show you that I finished, I felt like I hadn't accomplished anything massive, which you don't need to do. I kept telling myself it's not important, you don't need to finish one of your jumpers because I've got so many on the needles right now but I'm just in a stage of my life right now where I want to be working on different things and I need to have a small project on the go for when I'm driving or well, I'm not driving when I'm a passenger in the car um, and the sweaters or the jumpers that I'm making are getting to that point because I started them all at the same time they're at a point where they are all I'm working on sleeves or I'm finishing off the body, things like that. But that aside, I will move on to my whips, which if you watched the last episode, you will see I had 
a good handful on the needles. I have even more this time. I just had a fun delivery. I, they just delivered an axe because Ed needed an axe to cut wood for our new wood burner. Sorry, I'm out of breath. I just ran up the stairs. I'm fitter than that, I promise. I thought I'd quickly, before I move on to my whips, I will show you just, I, I do enjoy a bit of cross stitch. And I saw an amazing woman. I saw an amazing lady on YouTube. Um, she was in Japan and she did a little cross stitch a day and made like a diary of it. And I was really inspired and I was like, oh, I'm gonna do it for Christmas. I did one and it took me an hour and I was like, nah, like I do enjoy cross stitch, but not this much, this is wasted time for me. So I'm thinking maybe something in January that I will try and pick 12 icons from 2023 that represent each month and make like a little 2023 journal of things anyway that's a completely future craft but i just thought i'd show you because i thought it's really sweet that's my little robin so i'll start with the piece that i am working on right now the most um since i finished some of my smaller cast offs this is i'll show you the front my clint classic sweater by Anna Wenzel and last time you saw this I think I hadn't done any sleeves and I'd just joined in the round for the body. Um, as you can see I've knit a fair bit of the body um, and just put it put the stitches on hold and I have knit one sleeve. So in the pattern, the way these stitches, um, stitches, the way these sleeves are designed are you just pick up a certain amount of stitches and knit all the way in pattern, no decreases, and then you decrease at the end. You do one set of decreases at the end. So I did make a very small mod modification. Other than that, everything is very much to pattern. Um, I did do two... So I did one round of decreases and then I did two rounds of decreases. So all together I did two rounds of decreases um, before doing a few rows of twisted rib. And the reason I did this is because I did one and I tried it off and it was still very large on my wrist. And even in the photograph, it looked larger than the photograph of the original design. So I decided to do another one and I'm so glad I did. As I was binding off, I was like, oh gosh, I hope this is big enough, but it is super stretchy. like. Stretchy enough definitely for me to get my wrist through. So now it sits really perfectly on my wrist. Um, I am knitting this garment up in Isaga Alpaca 2 in the colour E0, which is their natural undyed yarn. I'm holding that double, so two strands of that, held with one strand of tin silk mohair in their off-white colour, which is 1012. It's a very, I don't know if it's a very rustic yarn, but I don't think it's very, it's a high ply yarn because it's not very twisted. <laughs> um, I'm not gonna go into the technicalities because I don't know them, um, but I just thought that I have found when knitting this jumper up, it's, well, when knitting this yarn up, I've knit this yarn up in three different attempts of garments so far. This is the one I've settled on, but even the other two attempts, I found the yarn very loose, not particularly round, but it really works for this broken ribbed project. Um, it's just got a folded twisted rib neck and it's going really well. It's, it, it looks lovely, it's different. It's very different to um, any of the other raglans I've ever knit. The shape of it is really interesting. I don't really have much idea what the body's going to do yet. The pattern does say it's a shorter body. I knit most things shorter anyway because I like them cropped if I'm not going to tuck them in. I'm very tempted. I need to read what the pattern says. But I would love to do two rounds of decreases and like a small waistband so that this is like really cropped here and then it's got the big flowy sleeves and you get that triangle shape. I might do that. Um, if not, I'll just do your standard. Yeah, I'll, who knows? One thing I will point out is I must have, so although I had the correct number of stitches the whole way for my for my size, 
um, I must have swapped the pattern at some point in the broken rib or I must have done two two knit rounds um, at some point I can't spot it but the reason I say that and this isn't on the original pattern when I picked up the sleeves I had the correct amount of stitches for the sleeves but I don't know if you can see here I had to go from if I was to stay in pattern I would have had two columns of pearls or four, four, sti four pearl stitches on each side. So I just, all I had to do, and I did it on the other sleeve as well, it's, it was quite simple for me to work out. Instead of continuing pattern, just under the arm, I just swapped where, where it was a knit row, I just swapped it to a pearl row so that the pattern was correct the whole way around. Yeah, that's all I've got to say about that. Um, I did have to order more yarn. I had to order both more hanks of yarn and more tin silk mohair. I'm hoping to finish the sleeve today and tonight and then I've just got to decide what I'm doing with the body so that should be finished very soon. I also haven't decided if it's worth showing you my mist sketch sweater but I will. So this is the mist sketch sweater pullover by Handmade by Florence. Um, it's a really beautiful stranded colour work piece. I went into a lot of detail um, in the last episode and all I've really done in this episode, in, in the last three weeks is knit maybe an inch, two inches of the body more. Um, it is nice because it is just stocking it in the round now. But that is knit in Knitting for Olive merino and soft silk mohair in the colours Dusty Dove Blue and Ice Blue. The next piece I'm going to show you is something I have been working on. I am currently filming a project vlog for it. It is a self-drafted men's turtleneck pullover inspired by the jumper that Jim Carrey wears in the 1998 film The Truman Show. So we were watching The Truman Show and I saw this jumper and I was like, I'm making that for Ed. I asked him, he loved it. It's so cool. I love it. It's this chunky ribbed fisherman's like men's jumper. Now I had a really good search online and I couldn't find anything that was exactly like it and so I decided I was going to self-draft it and self-design it from scratch um, it's all documented in this vlog which I was hoping to have up like last week but you're about to see I haven't even finished the jumper here it is It's men's, so it's huge. But throughout the whole project vlog, I'm like, it's not gonna be big enough. It's looking really small. Obviously it's, so it's a three by two rib. So it grows massively. It is knit up in one strand of Drops Nepal, which is an Aran weight, a heavy Aran weight in the color dark gray mix. And one strand of brushed alpaca silk in the color black and it makes this because I wanted a black pullover but I didn't want it to be completely black so mixing it with the gray gives this beautiful like charcoal but still black pullover very much like what I could make out in the film. This was really fun because the construction of this jumper is something I completely did myself. I did it as I went along. It, it doesn't use any new techniques because it's mainly knitting flat and picking up stitches um, in different areas of it. But I won't go into too much detail because it's, it's very much like a, this is like my creativity love child. I don't know how to explain it. Like I just wanted to experiment and put it into this 
So I knit the front flat, the back flat. There are something like 10 rows here, which I picked up and attached them. It's got this beautiful, so it's a big, chunky neck. And then it had this super deep, super, super deep armhole. This has proved to be the, like, the death of me. <laughs> this is why this product is not done. This much sleeve has taken me like six hours of knitting. Um, and I am decreasing every third row and it still takes, it doesn't feel any quicker. It's just going, and it is massive. Like when I wear it, it's crazy big here. I'm hoping it'll look a bit better on him because the original sleeve in the sweater is quite tapered, but also tight. I don't know, we're just gonna keep going. It's just the absolute, it's a bit of a nightmare. <laughs> and it's just getting the motivation to knit on it, but I cannot get over how squishy and like, it's so nice. And I'm very tempted to knit up my own project in this combination of yarn. And um, this is knit on six millimeter needles. So it's, I wanna say you fly through it. You do not, um, but, it's just so nice. I'm obsessed with it and I would definitely work on something similar for myself, obviously without that sleeve because I'm not doing that again. I have to do it again for this side and I'm not looking forward to that. But I know it's gonna be so worth it. This is going to be so good. I'm a big fan, it's super long. The only thing I will say, and this is all documented in the project vlog, so I don't wanna make it too boring for you if you wanna watch that, but oh, I did do something wrong. Like the cast off flares out slightly, but in the in the original film and in the pictures, he wears it tucked in and it looks so cool. It's like 80s, very cool. So I'm gonna show you um, a very, this was a very, very spontaneous cast on. I have had the pattern for the champagne cardigan by Petit Knit. There's a lot of Petit Knit in this episode as well. Um, but, I will touch on some patterns that I've recently bought that aren't petite knit, so there will be variety coming up. This is a very spontaneous uh, cast on. I own the pattern, the Champagne Cardigan by Petite Knit, and I've tried it a couple times, haven't made gauge. I have decided, I decided to cast it on. So this was cast on a long time ago, um, or no, this was cast on right after I filmed the last episode for about three weeks ago. Haven't worked on it too much. Um, because I feel guilty working on this when I've got other things that need finishing. But I desperately wanted a red cardigan. Um, it is knit in Drops Lima, which is their DK weight version. I knit my Celeste sw pullover sweater in this yarn and absolutely loved it. So I ordered a lot, I don't know how many grams of this beautiful red color, which is color 3609. I wanna say it's just called red. I hope it's just called red, but it's, yeah. It's knit up on 4.5 millimeter needles, which is nice because I didn't want any four millimeter projects at the moment because I've got those two pullovers on four millimeter needles and they are just doing my head in. So. I wanted something a bit more chunky that I could work on. It's this, gives this, oh, I'm obsessed with the way this yarn knits up. It's just so even. Um, yeah, no, I'm on gauge, which is just a godsend for me because I'm not very good at that. I can't believe I've done this. I don't know what size I'm knitting. I don't know if I'm knitting the extra small or the small. I think I'm knitting the extra small. So this is something I have started doing with my knits. I had it on the other few. I pop a little tag on the top of the knit and I name the project. I write what size needle I am using for it because with my interchangeable needles, if I wanna start something new, I'll like scroll them up and then I'll forget what I'm knitting them with. So this has been really helpful because I don't use Ravelry very much or keep notes or at least my notes will be disorganized. This is a very good way of me doing it. 
I write down the yarn I've used and I write down the color of the yarn I've used. What I've realized that I haven't been writing on these, which I need to do, I need to write the size that I'm knitting down. You learn, you learn as you go along. And that's very much me, you know, you learn something every day, something I need to take into consideration as I need to write down what size I'm writing. I'll refer back to the pattern and look at the size recommendations. Not much to show you, beautiful color. Love, love, love. Oh, look, I need a new ball. I love that. Um, yeah, I am absolutely loving that. Not sure when that's gonna be ready. That'll be probably a spring finish, which will be really nice because I'll have something to wear for spring. <sighs> Good news, it's not a petite pattern, petite knit pattern. Bad news is it's knitting drops. <laughs> So I'll tell you first, this is knit up in Drops Lima Mix. And this is the color Almond, which I think is a new color. It's beautiful. And this is Drops Brushed Alpaca Silk, uh, also in Almond. So together, so this is supposed to be knit on like five millimeter needles, which is fine, but it is like a very heavy, the way I describe this, if you don't know what Brushed Alpaca Silk is, it's like a very heavy mohair. It's a very fluffy yarn, but it's, it's it's more dense. And I'm holding it with a heavy DK weight. I haven't told you, I've just realized I haven't told you what all these yarns, the, the um, combination is, but they're very simple. The Drops Lima and the Drops Nepal, which I've spoken about both of these, are 65% wool, 35% alpaca. And Drops Brushed Alpaca Silk is 77% alpaca, 23% silk, which is super luxurious. And actually it's not expensive and you get so far with it because of the type of yarn it is. Here's the project. <laughs> it is the start of a Harris hood. I think it's a new pattern by Cocoa Moore Knitwear. Uh, the reason I say I'm almost positive it's a new pattern, one, it came up on my Instagram um, the other day for test calling and it's out. So I, it must have been like an old uh, test call. But also on Ravelry, it's got like no projects and it's by Coco Amore, which is I've heard of before. So I'm a, I think it's a pretty well known uh, designer. It is just an oversized balaclava hood. I think the difference between a balaclava is a balaclava is supposed to be more fitted and come up a lot more like over the mouth, whereas a hood is very much like a hoodie. But this does have increases around the front, so it comes out. And yeah, you just knit your, your bit so it'll be like this. I'm on gauge, which is a good start. Uh, the pattern is five millimeter needles. I am knitting it on five millimeter needles, which, um, and I'm getting gauge and I'm using like something that technically I think would call for like seven. This combination would possibly call for like six or seven um, millimeter needles. I don't trust me on that, but the original pattern, I'm pretty sure. Yes, the original pattern is knit up in a DK weight and a mohair and I'm knitting it up in a DK weight and what is technically an iron weight, but I don't class it as an iron weight. And I have got this beautiful, it's not as thick as I expected, but it is a lovely thick. It is a thick, thicker, heavier fabric material. Um, and yeah, I'm really, really enjoying it. It's just knit back and forth the whole way. I think this color, I have like a, a beige Mac and I have a handbag which is tan beige and then it's got like teddy fur along it i don't have it up here i don't think and it's this color pretty much um and because of the teddy fur it's got like fluff on it so this is a fluffy headpiece and really excited to finish that kind of like the project in the car or on transport not that i i don't really go out much so there's not too much public transport in my life loving that can't wait to see how that how that comes out that is it for my whips i'm gonna move on to acquisitions oh i've actually got more than i expected because in the last video i remember waiting for a package and it didn't turn up so i'll show you those today so as i've spoken about in the past i 
was part of a yarn subscription service from Yarnside Hand Dyed Yarn. They do a beautiful mini skein mystery club where each month you get two mini skeins, uh, two different colours, and she's very much inspired by art, literature, and nature. For November, the mini skein mystery club is called Second Spring. It comes with two colours and it's got some beautiful oranges and yellows in there. It looks a little bit less saturated um, because of the exposure. Beautiful yellowy orangey brown. And then my favourite personally from this month or last month is Misty Hedgerow. It's described as autumnal colours with different shades of brown, but the one which isn't mentioned in the description, they do say uh, cold air freezing and early frost. I see a lot of silver in this. Um, and I love that. I love that it's not just gold, it's got a bit of brownie, bronzy, gold, silver, and some like greens. Stunning. I'm a big fan of this one. And I got a... I got three skeins of each of those, which I usually order multiple. Um, and then Etsy were doing an offer where if you spent a certain amount, you got quite a large discount. So I thought I would do more orders from her shop. And this is a beautiful 50 gram skein of four ply sock yarn called Melt Water. All these yarns are 75% merino, 25% nylon. Do they say non super? Oh, they are super wash. They're all super wash. This is a beautiful, like, ice blue greens. And then to go with it, I say to go with it, I just thought it was a really nice pair, is one of another 50 gram skein from her Nocturne series. And this is called Nocturne Blue and Silver. And then I had a little bit more to spend and this is just a single colour. Uh, this is a 20 gram, another four ply. And this is called Tawny Owl. So these last three colours I've shown you, you can buy. She will hand dye them for you on her site. You can buy them straight. These two, which I showed you at the start, are the Mystery Club. I think November is still available right now. So if you go and check it out, you can still get these two. Um, I don't usually like to share the Mystery Yarns until they've been released, but they've been released. She obviously has extras left over. So you can get these two. So they're my hand dyed yarns. I did not order any of the mystery yarn for December. Um, I think I missed, I actually missed the, the window that you could order in. Um, I will double check today to see if she's got any left over because sometimes that happens. Um, and I haven't decided uh, next year what I'm going to do. Yeah, I just haven't decided yet if that's something I can budget into next year, especially as I want to come away from using so much drops. Who knows if it's gonna happen. My final acquisition is another drops yarn. Um, and you've seen it before, I will show you. It is the brushed alpaca silk in this color. This color is fascinating. So drops quite often match their colors across the different yarns. This color is called Rainforest Dew, D-E-Y, D-E-W, God, spell. Um, and it's such a cool color. It's like slightly yellowy, slightly green. It looks like honeydew melon, um, if you know what that color is. It's beautiful, but there is not a single exact or even in my opinion close match across the yarn the yarn the drops yarns um so i did just order three skeins of this for myself now let me explain why so i have the pattern for blouse number one by my favorite things knitwear uh, oh blouse number one light so it is her mohair edition 
and she knits it up with either two or three strands of mohair on six millimeter needles. I have knit one strand of this up on six millimeter needles and it makes gauge. So I thought this would make a really lovely blouse number one light. I don't know how it's gonna fall because of the yarn weight is different. It's something we'll find out and I don't like frogging this because it just rips, like it's really hard to frog. But yes, I really do want to make a blouse number one light out of that. Just because the color's so cool. Um, I think it's, it's quite different to what I'm wearing, but it's, it's beautiful. So that is my yarn acquisitions. I do have one more acquisition and it is a book. Now this is gonna make me the queen of irony. I have gone and got myself <laughs> 52 weeks of socks the first book because there are two of these now I don't know if you can get the second one in shops yet but I got this from my local yarn store it's a book of socks and I was just saying how much I despise knitting socks but some of them are really cool and it's a beautiful book so I wanted it for my room and yeah that is my other acquisition there are so many beautiful patterns in here a lot of them are lace socks because there's only one style of vanilla sock a lot of them have beautiful intricacies that i think will keep me motivated and make the knitting experience more enjoyable for me so that is my final acquisition i did mention at the start of this video that i'm going to add an extra section to my podcast i'm hoping time wise we are okay and we've got enough time but I will start with um, what I've been reading and what I am reading. I have just finished in the last two weeks, last week I have finished the A Court of Thorns and Roses series. So I've just finished the final book, A Court of Silver uh, Flames. And yeah, I was, I was not sure about this. Why did I decide to read it? I did get kind of drawn in by the the fact that everyone was reading it and I do love fantasy and I love romance that's pretty much all I try to all I really read at the moment um unless I also love an autobiography yeah I thought it was I thought it was very good I thought the first book was great I thought the second book was great let me get this right Oh, see, I don't remember what happens in which book now. There was one book where I was like, oh, I'm not sure about that. I really struggled to get into one of them. I want to say it's the second book, and I think it's because, no spoilers, but I think it's because of the change um, between the first book and the second book. You'll know what I'm talking about if, if you've read it. Um, but... the Well, I say the final book. I think there's going to be more. When I finished it, I said, oh, that can't be the end, because... We've still got, you know, another person's perspective or at least one other person's perspective to um, read from. And from what I've seen, I think that Sarah J Maas is um, working on another one or plans to work on another one. This, this final, final book, it got some really mixed reviews. I was having a quick squ scroll, having a quick scroll through Reddit and a lot of people didn't like the main character but I loved it. I really liked the rawness um, that was in the in the character and I thought it was great. I loved it. It was a little bit slow to start but you know if you've read the previous books you know that the good stuff's gonna come so it did and yeah it was I really enjoyed it and I'm looking forward to the next one. Now I have a question for you if you are a reader of this series or love this this genre. Um, I know that there are two other series by Sarah J Maas. I want to say one is Crescent City and the other series is, it's either Tower of Glass or Throne of Glass, it's TOG. Which ones, what do you recommend I read next? Um, I've heard mixed reviews about both, but let me know your thoughts, I'd love to know. After finishing that, series or that book. Um, I've started reading The Wolf Den by Elodie Harper. I'm only four chapters in and I do have to say I haven't been enjoying it as much. I found the first couple of chapters really like hard to get through and I know why. It's because it's written in a third person from the third person perspective whereas I've come from books which are written from a first person perspective and it's like given me whiplash like it's so it, it's been a real kind of 
brain melter. So I had to get over that and I am getting over it. So I, I feel like when I read some last night, I was enjoying it more. Let me know if you've read um, either of these books or any books by Elodie Harper actually and yeah it's set so I can give you a bit of a, a lowdown on The Wolf Den because I've only just started it myself. Um, it's set in ancient Greece and it's about a brothel and the ladies that work at the brothel and they have been enslaved um, so the main character at the start, that is currently what I'd class as the main character, she was quite from quite a wealthy family um, somewhere else in the world and she was basically kidnapped and sold as a slave into this brothel and yeah, it, it's it's interesting. Um, I'm hoping it gets good. Like I'm hoping, I'm hoping it has elements of the Akatar series because I don't know, I've just come from that now and, and I'm into it, so we will see. Um, that's pretty much it with my reading. Um, what am I watching? Uh, Ed and I have just finished the whole of Game of Thrones again. So I've watched it twice before, this was my third time watching it and this was Ed's second time watching it. There are so many things you don't remember. Um, I'm very much in like a fantasy, fantasy era I think, but love, really enjoyed that. Um, we flew through it, I think we finished, we started like a month ago, maybe six weeks ago, and we've just watched a couple of episodes a night. Um, I finished watching The Kardashians, which I do, I'm not like a huge follower of The Kardashians, but I do find it interesting to know what's going on with them. So I do watch the series and it just comes out once a week and there's only 10 episodes per season, quite enjoy that. So that has finished now and I am watching a lot of YouTube, which I do anyway. Um, you'll know that I speak about other podcasters on here, but I've been watching a lot of the knitting podcasts. Um, I've been watching a couple of gamers uh, on YouTube. I am a big fan of a game called The Long Dark and another game called Project Zomboid, both of which uh, a channel called Accurize 2 has um, been doing videos on for years and then I am a huge fan of Zach who posts the Long Dark videos. So they're, you know, two of the gaming things I've been watching on YouTube. And then High Fiber Knits for my knitting podcast, Knee Knits, uh, Crea Bear, Handmade by Florence, who else have I been watching? Those Twins Who Knit, although I haven't seen an episode from them for a little while, but then what can I say? I've been gone a good few weeks, so yeah, I'm trying to think if I watch anybody else's. Mandy, Knits by Mandy. I think she doesn't go by Mandy, she goes by Amanda. But yeah, I'm getting very hot. I have got the heating on in here, but that is it from me. Thank you so much for sticking through this video. I have a new laptop now and my editing software is much better. So you will notice that the editing in this video has been slightly different. I should be able to get videos out because with my last laptop, it would crash every like 10 minutes and I'd have to re like not restart, but close, come back. None of those problems now. So the videos are getting edited and uploaded much quicker. I will hopefully have, oh, what's the date? So you probably won't have a podcast episode from me until after Christmas now. I am away for Christmas and New Year, but I'm thinking I'm gonna do a little vlog, a mini travel vlog for that. I am going to be in Paris for Christmas and in Spain for New Year. So you might get a, a mini vlog from that period, but other than that, I will see you in January and hopefully have lots and lots of things to show you. As usual, I would really appreciate it if you guys could give this video a like, leave me a comment, and if you wanna see more of me, hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. This channel is growing to something, into something that I'm really excited to put a lot of time and effort into. So let me know if you have any recommendations of things you want to see. And if there are things you don't want to see, let me know and I'll see you next time. Bye guys. Bye.